one thing about our guys today, they, they're going to fight, um, never give up. It wasn't pretty at the beginning, and uh, I thought they fought their butt back into it. Um, credit to TCU. Uh, they jumped out. Obviously, a um, uh, good football team, but we fought back into it, back and forth. Um, you know, it's, a, it's another fourth quarter loss, and um, I promise you we're going to keep knocking on that door. We're going to keep knocking on that door, and we're going to knock it down. And when we get to that point where you, you learn how to finish a game, um, this program is going to win a lot of games. And um, I know that. And uh, we're going to keep developing better. We're going to um, keep recruiting and keep adding to this team. And uh, I'll take knocking on that door anytime. I promise you that. These kids are fighting their butt off. And, Appreciative of the fans. I thought the fans kept us in the game. I really did. Thought they kept us in it until we could get close and um, make it to one score game at halftime and then take the lead. Um, so I'm very, very appreciative of our fans. And um, I do. I think they kept us in the game. But, um, you know, two things we needed to do, we didn't do. Um, we did not stop the run and we did not run the ball very well. Um, that was. Uh, I thought a key to victory and then uh, turnover margin. We needed to win the turnover margin. We did not. We're the best in the Big 12. And uh, we didn't play like the best in the Big 12 today. Not, not one takeaway and, and gave, up, uh, gave up two turnovers. And obviously the, the, uh, the fumble was critical there late in the game. And I think it may be only our second fumble all year, but that's a critical time and, and we obviously can't have it. So, you mentioned no turnovers. Uh, Maybe I guess your biggest home win this year against Oklahoma State. You had a freshman quarterback, and you got three interceptions and two fumbles. He committed five turnovers. What did you think Duggan did today that uh, you, did not, you were not able to take advantage? Of I don't think the pressure Don was consistent enough on him. Um, at times it was there, but I don't think it was consistent enough. I still think we got to tighten things down in the back end. Um, couldn't get off the field on third down. Bottom line. You, Nine out of 24 wins. I think they were 15 out of 24. And that's why the time of possession is all jacked up right now um, in this game, is not getting off the field on third downs. And at times it was, I just think it was inconsistent pressure. It was inconsistent coverage. At times it was tight coverage. And we, you know, he's got all day to throw and you can't cover him. And it's, uh, um, it's kind of a two-edged sword right there with the coverage and the pressure. A lot of times when y'all are blitzed, you haven't got home. When you have co played coverage, still giving up passes, uh, you kind of pull on your hair out at this point. Yeah, I know that's it's been tough on KP um, as he calls a game. Um, is the inconsistencies in both of those that you just mentioned? Um, you've got to be able, you know. Obviously, we're at our best just like everybody is when they get the pass rush needed from their D line and you don't have to add in, can take away from the coverage. Um, but it's uh, obviously you need to mix that, and I think he's mixing that. But um, we we got pressure on him at times. We really did, and we, we heard his clock um, in his mind, and, and I think you saw the results of that. But when we didn't, um, we couldn't get off the field. <coughs> For Jordan, at what point did you guys kind of realize maybe he wasn't 100% able to play? About the middle of the first quarter, yeah. I, I got a lot of respect for number one. Um, he cares about Texas Tech. Um, I hope the fans see that and see the passion that he plays with. And um, he wasn't able to practice till extremely late in the week, um, and um, and gave it a go, and um, just wasn't there. But um, the guy, the guy gives everything he can for Texas Tech football, and I respect that. Should you talk about the Jets' performance today and what you saw from him? Yeah, a little up and down. Um, times gutsy and and um, courageous and, and really good. Um, and then at times a, a tick late on some balls, um, like the first picks, a tick late, and it, and it gets tipped. But, you know, and I get all that. You throw the ball enough, you throw it as much as we do. Some of those tips are going to happen. That's, that, that, that comes with playing the territory. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, looking at, at Jed, it's just, it's, it still can improve fundamentally. He's, he's still loose with the ball in the pocket. but. Um, the guy kept believing. He kept fighting. He got hit more than he's got hit in a long time. Um, he had a good look in his eye, and the pride and the passion that he's trying to play with, I think, is um, you know I think our other guys see it, and the never give up attitude I think was 
um, kind of started permeating the rest of the team as the, you know, the first half wore on. And we, um, you know, obviously a big touchdown he throws and um, a huge catch by RJ um, is uh, got kind of got us a shot in the arm and kind of got us back into it. Coach, Jed and Dalton had a pretty good chemistry in the last several weeks in particular. When he, when he got knocked out of the game, how did that change the way you guys would tag them offensively? Well, you still have to you still have to throw your stuff because it's still based on it's not not so much a personnel, but it's still based on coverage and the looks that you're getting. And there were times that we still had throws to the H, we just couldn't get them completed. But you mentioned the early big deficit it seemed like kind of a slow start, similar to the Iowa State game. Why do you think the team started off slow today? I don't know. You know, offensively it was like shot play. One or two, and we hadn't had many of these, but it was like one or two administrative penalties just kind of got us behind the chains. And then on defense, it, I mean, point to one thing, it was third down. It was third down on defense, the first two, three series. Coach, could you talk about uh, your pass protection and TCU's defensive quickness? Yeah, yeah, they're athletic up front. I mean, uh, those ends, especially the young kid, 32, is really good. Um, i tell you, I thought we protected well, but here's what here's what started happening as the game started wearing on. The integrity of the pocket started creeping in on Jet a little bit, and we started losing some of the integrity of that pocket. And that's that's 90 and 94 inside with the push, and we got to we got to be stronger there in the in the pocket. And you know I'm going to tell you what started is because we weren't getting open because then Jet starts hanging on the ball, and then that 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 in that pocket is is exposed. Um, but he had enough time to throw it m multiple times. You know, we fought our way back in in the passing game, so we did protect him well enough to do it. He did get hit more than um, than I would like, but I think that was what got us back in the game was the passing game. Coach, the decision to go for two with about 13 minutes left in the third quarter, was that just seeing the importance of maybe getting within field goal range at that point? Field goal range? Like within a field goal. No, it, yeah, and that's that's um, a little early. That's one of the earlier times I've ever started going for two. Um, but at that point, we weren't stopping them on defense at that point, and I thought it was really going to get into a score fest. I mean, I thought this thing was going to keep going like a tennis match. Um, and then really after we, we didn't convert that, um, we started playing better defense and forcing we, we forced a three and out. I think we uh, forced a field goal on the next drive. So, you know, I – I'm not second guessing myself, but at that point we had not stopped him on defense, and I thought we needed to get that score right back to where it needed to be, so we were in striking range. I think it's all attributed to their heart and their passion. I think um, the effort that they played with in the second half. We had a bunch of dudes. Now, I mean, I can't tell you there was three or four times that I see a guy that needs a blow and there was a coach saying, stay in. I mean, stay in. Um, and guys just, um, I thought the grit that they showed um, is something that I want this program to always be about. And I'm not going to apologize for losing in the, in the fourth quarter. Okay, fight our butt back and continue to believe in the passion and the pride that I think they keep playing with. We got to play better. I know that. Um, we've got to heal up and, and um, we've got to execute better. On, um, especially offense early, we can't we cannot get us in that in that um, deficit and executing on defense and the third down. We were so poor in the first quarter on third down, and then okay, guys, we didn't fold tent, and um, that's that's one thing that that I've promised everybody here is how we're going to play, um, how we're going to be prepared, and then the pride and the passion that we're going to continue to fight with and play with, and and I can win with that. I can coach this. I can coach these guys. That locker room um, is still fighting and clawing. They ain't very healthy right now, and we, we're not very deep. But um, we're going to keep fighting. There's two left. Um, big game next week, obviously, senior day. And um, we're going to do everything we can to send the seniors out as winners.